All right. We are back with another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today we have James Nelson with us. James is the principal and head of Avison Young's Tri-State Investment Sales Group based out of New York City. Um, sounds like James is trying to get into my market, which is great. We always love to have new investors here in Seattle. Um, James comes at us with tons of experience across all the different asset classes. He's a broker. He does. He's done LP investing. He's a GP on investment. So James brings the experience. He brings the wisdom. I'm super excited to jump in and uh, and hear your story. James, thanks for hopping on the show. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Gabe. And always great to meet a fellow podcaster. Absolutely. Uh, I told you before we got on here, we like to start with stories. We like to hear how people got to where they are. Um, I know you got a good one. So why don't you take us back to the beginning and uh, tell us how you got in real estate? Sure. So I went to Colgate uh, class of 98 and was a swimmer there and in, an English major and didn't really know real estate was a thing. And by my senior spring, when all of my friends had investment banking jobs in the city, I said, well, maybe I should get serious. And I thought maybe I'd go out to the West Coast and make some movies or something. But then I realized that no one was actually paying any salary to do that. So <laughs> I went up to the, the Career Service Center and fortunately, there was a job posting to be a sales associate for Massey Knackle Realty Services, uh, co-founded by Paul Massey, a, a Colgate alum. And um, as luck would have it, the day I was up there was the day that the resume drop was due and later found out that only two people applied for the job and I was their second choice. So <laughs> we, we always joke that I, I started, fortunately, they took both of us. So uh, we, we always joke that I started with very low expectations, but um I guess I proved them wrong. Uh, it ended up after 17 years with them, and they, you know, were kind enough to elevate me as a, a partner. When I joined, we had 20 people uh, covering uh, really just Manhattan. And by the time we sold the company to Cushman and Wakefield, we were we had four offices, 250 people, and we were selling three to four times the amount of properties as the next investment sales firm here uh, in New York. So. Went on, had three more great years at Cushman and Wakefield, and then got this great opportunity to build out the investment sales platform at Avis & Young. Uh, we're a Canadian company that came into the U.S. about 12 years ago. We now have 60 offices here. As I, as I said, we, we have yet to open up an office in Seattle. We really need to change that. Um, you have a great market out there. Um, so, yeah, but in addition to brokerage, investing is my passion. Um in addition to being an LP on dozens and dozens of transactions, uh, I'm also uh, um, a co-GP in multifamily uh, product here in New York. And then I've also launched two real estate funds to put out JV equity uh, for value add deals uh, here in the city. So um, yeah, a little bit of everything over, over the years. So great to be None here. All. And you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about this at the end, but I know you got a book coming out, The Insider's Edge to Real Estate Investing which is the same title as your podcast. So if you guys, uh, if you don't make it to the end, just know he's got a book and check out his podcast, The Insider's Edge to Real Estate Investing. Um, we'll sw swing back and check that one out at the end. So before we do that, let's, uh, I had a few questions. Your story is great. And I always, I not intimidated is the word, but I, I have respect for anybody who is in the New York City market because I just feel like New York City is just another beast when it comes to real estate. Um, you guys have so many, you know, high rises and just, it's just, uh, it's quite its own monster out there. Um, so if you make it in New York city, as they say, you can make it anywhere and you are a testament to that. Uh, it sounds like you've had a lot of, ex you know, experience and success across all these different, um, avenues of do doing real estate. And I always say one of the real reasons I like real estate so much is there's so many ways to go about making a business in it. Um, but it always starts with sales. It always starts with, you know, finding good deals and executing on those good deals. Um, brokerages, you guys are the expert of the sales process. So why don't we start there? Um, you've had, you know, you've had it on the brokerage side. I'm sure you've had it on the, the buyer's side. Uh, what is the kind of the, the top tricks or I guess what makes a successful acquisitions pipeline when it comes to finding, um, finding good deals for investments? Sure. So I, I think specialization is really the key. And and, and now, um, after been doing this a while, I've built out this incredible team. We have close to three dozen professionals who, yes, are organized by different asset classes. Mm. Um, we cover the New York area. But when I started in my career, um, and, and the, you know, credit to the founders of Massey and Ackle, they had a territory system. They took New York City, they chopped it up into 50 territories. And I studied Chelsea, which is in uh, downtown Manhattan, 
And what I found was if you spend three to six months intensely studying an area, knowing everything about it, all the sales, where rents are going for, zoning changes, new developments in the area, you will find that you will know more about that area than even some of the veterans who've been in the business for decades as generalists. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's that old expression, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. And so, um, and that is one of the things I talk about in the book. When, when you're starting off, you know, pick something to specialize in, uh, a geography, an asset class, and that, that will really help give you the advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And I've actually, that's been something that I've struggled with, or I, I did struggle with when I got started was, I had that shiny object syndrome. Um, and I just, you know, there's so many different asset classes, so many things to do, and I just wanted to do it all. Um, so when you, when you suggest people specialize, uh, you mentioned both asset class and location. Do you say you're a new investor? They want to go and start investing in, they don't know. They just want to start investing in commercial assets and single family. How would you recommend that they choose specializations? Do you start with location or do you start with the asset class? I think it's always easiest to start geographically in your own backyard. So if you have, you know, if you're you're doing business, you've grown up in a certain area, you already have that advantage because you kind of know the drivers, what's going on in the area. You also have an idea of kind of what's changing and what's needed for an area. Um, as far as what asset class to to pick, and I also talk about this in my book, it really depends on how much time you have. You know, what is your risk profile, right? So you know, th there's ways to get into this business uh, passively. And I do a lot of that where I'll invest with clients as a, a limited partner, um, you know, all the way up to owning, you know, multifamily properties, you know, hundreds of units that you own and operate yourself. So it, you really have to first assess, you know, hey, is this going to be a full-time thing for me? Um, do I have the, the proper platform to do this? Am I, um, do I have the right capital to do this? So, you know, a lot of investors, they start with multifamily. It is um, the safest asset class and that people always need a place to live, right? And if you go in and you buy a 10, 20, 100 unit building and you lose one tenant, you're usually not waiting years to find that next tenant where, you know, depending, you know, with, with retail, depending where you are, yes, you could be waiting a long time. Um, office, and we could do a whole show on that, <laughs> but, you know, it seems to be still very up in the air with the return to office, the new hybrid um, but, but more importantly, certainly for the first time investor, I mean, it, it, it's such a capital intensive business with the amount of work that you have to put into a building and to incentivize a tenant. And then really kind of the last is development, which I, I tell, you know, new investors to steer clear of because th th there are so many things that can go wrong in a ground up development. So, you know, and there's of course other specialty assets, medical, industrial, um, data centers, but yeah, I think to start off, I think multifamily is probably what most people are comfortable with or a mixed use deal, maybe something with a store and apartments above. Yep. Yeah. Multifamily is the tried and true for sure. Um, I actually, we didn't mention this before we got on here, but I, I specialize in self-storage, um, and mobile home RV parks. Uh, it's definitely kind of one of the, one of the, um, niche real estate, uh, market or asset classes out there. And we're actually just starting our first ground up development, which is, you're right, a completely, it's a new ball game. Um, it might be my only ground up development because it does require quite a uh, quite a bunch of. Um, it's more intensive than than buying and flipping a property on its own. So, uh, you know, you've had experience across so many different assets. Do you have a favorite when it comes to you know the one that you specifically look for? Well, I'd say I, I'm probably a little bit of a contrarian. Um, I've been loving retail for the last mm. couple of years because. You know, just watching it get hammered with e-commerce and then COVID, and it was like the death of retail, right? And, and yeah, it got really bad. And you know, he, here in New York, even High Street, if we're talking, you know, Times Square, Soho, uh, you know, in some cases over the last five years, rents at first they went up four or five times, and then they dropped, you know, down to 10, 20 percent. And so you you have you know wow. rents that are having these wild swings. And, you know, retail is so specific to the location, the type mm -hmm. of store, even, you know, the position on the block. And if you really understand, you know, what retail tenants are looking for, or better yet, align yourself with a couple of retail tenants. You know, I, I um, there's a, a billionaire, Jeff Sutton, in the New York market who made his fortune by creating, you know, having really strong relationships with uh, brands like Payless Shoes or Walgreens. Mm -hmm. And he would go and buy distressed, vacant retail at a discount 
And day one, he'd put in that tenant and almost overnight, he doubles the value of the property because now, you know, he's got that credit, makes it easier to finance. So I, I still think that's a great opportunity today. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are kind of steering clear of, of retail. I always thought like strip center retail would be a lot of fun. Um, obviously I'm not, I'm not doing it, but I, I thought it would be fun just because there's so much that you can do to the property itself to, uh, to, you know, add value, um, to kind of make it for specific tenants. So, um, I'm not going to start talking about that cause I don't have the experience, but <laughs> it sounds like, uh, it sounds like you guys are definitely going down that route. Um, so on top of assets, you also, you know, you, you invest in different ways. You're an LP and a GP. Uh, let's talk about being an LP, about investing passively in um, other people's properties. How do you go about choosing the project that you want to invest in? What are kind of like the top three things that you look for? So first and foremost, it's always the sponsor, right? So, you know, to me, if you don't have a strong, trustworthy sponsor, it, it's an automatic non-starter. It doesn't matter how amazing the deal is. You have to have the right team who you know can execute on this, right? Um, the next is, is obviously the deal itself and and doing the underwriting and really not just you know taking uh, for granted wh whatever's in that investor memo, but doing your own diligence on where you know um, the acquisition price falls, and then obviously the business plan. Do they have the right idea to reposition the asset? So you know th those are really the the three things. Um, you know, and, and I've done this uh, for individual deals, but, you know, the most extensive investing that, I, that I've that i done, it was a partner in, in two uh, real estate funds where we went out and we raised $50 million and invested in a total of three dozen deals that had total capitalizations for over $300 million. And so had an opportunity um, to work with a lot of different sponsors. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so important to do that research, that diligence on the sponsor, especially if, if times get challenging. You know, sponsors, if you've been doing this long enough and you're active, not everything's going to be a win. But the question is, when things don't go as planned, you know, how do they behave? You know, and how do they behave with their investors? And, you know, I think the last piece is really just communication. You know, there, there's some deals where, you know, I've invested in and I always have to chase the sponsor mm -hmm. to find out what's going on. There's others who have quarterly updates, you know, great reporting. They stay ahead of the curve. So I don't have to, you know, wonder what's going on with the deal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, we're actually just doing our first syndication coming up here soon. So it's, uh, it's exciting to learn about what, um, you know, what other people, the, the positive experience other LPs have with their, the deals that they've invested in. Um, Okay. So I did check the clock. It looks like we are running down that timer on the 15 minutes. Um, so I do have to push us into the quick question round. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. It starts with books. I'm a big bookie. So give me two recommendations, one for general life wisdom, one for real estate specific. Wow. Okay. So I would say one of my favorite uh, books for wisdom is uh, Adam Grant, uh, Give and Take. Um, he, he's a Wharton professor and just you know, it's just doing good. And that's a lot of what we're doing right now on the show is putting out information out there to be helpful for others. Um, as far as investment books, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, not only Rod Santamassimo, who's still one of my coaches today, he wrote a book called Brokers Who Dominate, but also another friend, mentor and coach of mine, Blaine Strickland, who wrote, wrote Thrive and Adapt on really the future of, of real estate. So sorry, I know that, that was, uh, I mentioned three. No, it's okay. We're not going to, uh, three good recommendations. We always appreciate that. So give and take, hadn't heard about that one before. I'll have to check it out. Thrive and adapt about the future of real estate. Definitely sounds interesting. What was the third one again? Brokers who dominate from Brokers Rod Santamassimo. Actually for this audience, maybe knowing isn't doing that's his latest book. And that, that will, you know, the brokers who dominate really applies directly for brokers, but for investors, knowing isn't doing uh, you know, the title is pretty, you know, self-explanatory, but I think you'll get a lot out of it. No, I, I just by that title, I feel like I would like the book because it is so true. Um, and especially for new investors, I feel like it's so easy to get into the analysis paralysis thing. You can learn so much, uh, you know, just keep reading books and watching YouTube videos and all that stuff. But when you do your first deal, all of that, you know, things will come out of the woodwork that you never experienced and was not in the book. So I like the title. I haven't read it, but it sounds like something I'd like. All right, moving on. This is the next question is about or is for your younger self. So let's go back to the James 
who was still on the swim team back there at Colgate. Um, he was just looking for his first job. Go to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but I was super lucky because the the, the person that I started my career with, in fact, I just came from a lunch with him. So, you know, 25 oh, wow. years later, uh, Paul Massey, Bob Knackle, who was his co-founder, they continue to be mentors of mine. So, you know, don't just go for the job that gives you the, you know, the biggest paycheck. You know, you got to think long term. It's about working with incredible people and, you know, really to to think long term. So I, I was very lucky, but um, that, that's what I, I would have told myself going back. All right. And I'm actually going to skip questions. Usually this one is later on, but I'm going to ask it now because you've already touched on it. None of us are islands. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. So who is one mentor who has pushed your career along um, to where it is today? Well, my late grandfather uh, was completely self-made, started at 17 years old, had a child, uh, had to support his family. And so, I mean, he just did whatever it took to get by. Uh, He actually started selling cars on the lot, went, you know, worked his way up, uh, became a manager ended up buying dealerships and ended up on the board of GM. So really, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, the rags to riches story, but he was the ultimate deal maker and he loved real estate. He always said, James, you know, they're not making any more of it. And he would, he loved buying, selling homes. And, you know, interestingly, I didn't realize what he was doing at the time, but all the dealerships that he opened up, he would buy the land and mm. at least back to himself as a, as a business. The McDonald's so, model. I love it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, shout out to James grandfather thank you for helping him get to where he is today uh moves us to the next question this is our superman strengths we are all gifted with strengths that we uniquely give to this world so what is your superman strength i'd like to think that i i lead by example um i i don't know where i get the energy to do it but you know i, I well i do it, it's just you know a love a passion for what i'm doing and um I just, you know, every, every single morning uh, I'm, I'm up, I'm, I'm out there and, uh, you know, I, I just, I really love what I'm doing. So I, I, I would say uh, my energy probably, I mean, the fact that I'm still doing this, getting up at 445, five o'clock in the morning, uh, getting my workout in, getting on the train, coming into New York, you know, an hour 15 each way. And, you know, we, I go, the day goes nonstop, you know, but uh, having so much fun during it that, you know, the, the time just flies by. Nice. I love it. And that's the beautiful thing about doing something that you love that you find purpose in is that miraculously the energy just appears. You don't have to like worry about, worry about getting it. Obviously you need to take care of your body, but if, uh, if you're really into what you're doing, the energy will be there. So love to hear that. And that moves us on to the second to last question. This is about location. The United States is a huge area, a lot of square miles out there. Give me one Metro you're most excited about investing in today. Well, I've got to say New York. Of course, (laughs) of course. I've spent my entire (laughs) career here and you know, look, New York has actually taken a lot of flack over the last five years. And I have witnessed a lot of our investors leave, mm. uh, mostly for the Southeast. And yeah. the reason being is, look, we have a challenging um, political environment to do business. Uh, we have rent regulation. Uh, building can be very challenging, right? Um, and so I, I think a lot of investors said, well, hey, I'm not going to fight this uphill battle anymore. I'm going to go down to the you know, the south. I'm going to go buy apartments there. And yes, it is easier in many cases to build and add square footage. But then also, you know, I, I think what makes it so easy also, you know, you end up seeing a lot more competition down there where the barriers to entry are very challenging in New York. And I think some of these recent changes, whether it's regulation um, they're, they're, they're priced in, you know? And, and so you see today, you know, you hear about down in the Southeast, you know, three, four caps. I'm, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that w- that's what your market was trading at. I mean, we got fives and sixes in New York, which is pr- pretty amazing to hear. And, you know, even in challenging times like this, with this, this run up in interest rates, you know, New York is still known by investors around the world. And it always amazes me that when things get tough, that is actually when the foreign investors kind of pile mm. in to say, hey, yeah. this is our opportunity to come in and buy. And, um, you know, they, they're willing to take a, a long-term view. So 
You know, I, I've, I've never had to look really outside my market. Um, occasionally, I'll have a client who wants to sell a, a building. We sold an office deal down in Nashville, and I'll, I'll bring in my, my local team to partner with. And I do a bunch of stuff down in Florida as well. But, you know, 95% of what we're doing here is New York City. So I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, no, that makes sense. In fact, uh, one of the um, uh, really successful self-storage guy that I know, he, uh, you know, King County, where, where Seattle is located, is notoriously difficult to deal with when it comes to development. Um, and he says he loves that because it makes it harder for other people to come in. And the harder it is, that means the better deals you'll be able to find. So um, totally makes sense from a New York perspective. And uh, especially since you've lived there so long, invest in your back door. That's what that's the common common knowledge there. Um, but that leads us to the very last question. And this one's for the listeners. First, tell us a little bit about the book, what people can expect when they uh, when they open it up. And then uh, second, tell us the best way for people to reach out and get in contact with you. Awesome. Really appreciate that. So uh, the insider's edge to real estate investing. Again, that's the name of my podcast and my upcoming book, which McGraw Hill is publishing. It's releasing at the end of January. So you can actually go and pre-order it right now. Um, and by the way, you can find out all my stuff at jamesnelson.com. That's where you can find my podcast, video series, um, and as well as um, the ability to pre-order the book. And, you know, th th this book and part of this came out of the lessons I'd learned in the podcast and as a broker and as an investor. Um, but I also do a lot of guest lecturing. So uh, I used to be an adjunct professor at NYU. I've guest lectured at Columbia, um, Wharton. And what always amazes me when I speak to these real estate professors is I ask them, I said, what's the book? You know, what's, what is the book that you assigned your teachers and your students rather? And amazingly, almost none of them have a book. They said, well, there's this resource. I grab a chapter here, or I've got some handouts here. Here's my three ring binder. And, you know, it dawned on me, there's very few books, how to from start to finish. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of books on how to invest that are very specific, maybe, you know, how to invest in multifamily or how to build self-storage or whatever it is, but there are universal um, principles on how to go about investing really, you know, and it, it is step by step, right? So I've written this book in case you've never invested in real estate at all, or maybe you're in the business, maybe you're a broker and you want to get into investing, but maybe you're also a veteran and you're watching other people pass you by and you want to step up your game. So, you know, I believe, and the reason why I call at the insider's edge is because you can gain an edge in this business to outperform the market. This is not like investing in the stock market. You and I can, anybody gets the same information when buying a stock, right? And we can all go and find out where a share is trading at any minute of the day. But you know, there could be two storage opportunities in the same area and one's worth double. And, and maybe that's because the way it was built, maybe it's the ceiling heights, maybe it's the tenancy and having that knowledge, right? And the, the ability to build the right team, to have the right people to find these opportunities, you really can outperform the market. So, you know, that's that's the whole point. You know, there, there's a lot in there, not only about finding opportunities, how to work with brokers, how to raise capital, how to finance deals, uh, how to uh, improve upon them. Uh, so th th there's, there's really, I, I'm hoping that after someone reads this book, they will absolutely have a roadmap and, and know where to go. Perfect. And uh, where can they reach out and find that book where they're going to be able to buy it? So if you go to jamesnelson.com, it'll give you the links, but you can also just go straight to Amazon. If you go to Amazon and uh, uh, type in Insider's Edge to Real Estate Investing, you can you can get it there. Perfect. And then as far as uh, connecting with me, and I love putting out a lot of content uh, to be helpful, uh, James Nelson NYC. You can find me on um, Instagram um, as well as LinkedIn, and, and I'm starting to get more active on Twitter again. So uh, stay tuned on that. All right. Well, I will put that link in the show notes, jamesnelson.com. If you guys want to reach out to J uh, James, maybe get his book, go ahead and click the little more in the description. It'll pull down this, the description and in there you can find James's link. So James, that wraps it up. Again, thank you very much for hopping on the show. Gabe, thanks. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. For everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at the real estate investing club.com. And if you want to support the show, the only thing we ask is that you leave us a review on Apple. Other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. 
Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and we're able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance a deal with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. To, the first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like, clock, like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investor's quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of, uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.